everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all Reach Higher stories happening in the greatest county in the world. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I work at the best high school in the world. I'm with the amazing school counselor. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, my name is Mark Lim, and I'm a high school counselor at Ramona High School in Riverside Unified School District. Mark, can you tell us how long you've been a school counselor? This is my 20th year in, as a school counselor. I spent eight of them at Ontario Montclair School District as a middle school counselor, and I was a teacher for three years at a junior high school, and this is my 12th year at the high school in Riverside. So overall, it's 20 years. Wow, you have a lot of experience as a school counselor and educator. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was your college partnerships. Can you share with everyone how you started your college partnerships on your campus? Sure. When I first came on board back in 2007, the vast majority of our students were looking at all the public universities, the Cal States and the UCs, but realizing the, the impaction that that many students face with the public universities here, we had some students that had asked, what about the private schools, out-of-state schools and in-state private schools? So prior to coming to Ramona High School, I didn't know anything about A to G. I didn't know anything about college admission, but I learned. I actually attended Avid Rim Summer Institute in San Diego, and they talked about Avid-friendly schools and how they could support first generation type students. So then I started to realize how important it is to develop and cultivate intentional partnerships that would support our underrepresented students in Riverside, especially at, at my school and in, in my district. That's how it all started back in 2007. And from there on, I was able to make connections with different colleges and universities. They invited me to different fly out programs, which I took advantage of. And that's how it all started. I, I can really go more into more of the partnerships. So when I was uh, my first year at Ramona High School, it started with one young Latina student. Her name was Janet Velasquez. And she wanted to pursue the STEM field. And I connected her with WPI, which is an out-of-state private institution known for its STEM field. And Janet was willing to take the leap of faith and wanted to go far away from Riverside and culturally I had to make sure that her, her family is okay with it because I could probably get her connected with that particular university and she set the path after that we sent 19 more students from Ramona High School studying all the way in Worcester Polytechnic Institute 19 of them and many of them had had full ride scholarships and they're now fully employed um, some of them even stayed back in the East Coast um, so that all started with Janet setting the path and then I started to take advantage of more council flyout programs making the connections which is very important to me as a high school counselor on behalf of our students. I've been to one of the AVID conferences and I, I learned a lot and um, I would recommend that people go to those conferences even if you're not the AVID counselor just learn about the great programs and opportunities that it offers. For the counselor fly-ins, can you share some of the ones that you attended and how how you got how you were able to attend those fly-in programs? Oh, and for those people that don't know what it is, can you also tell them what a fly-in program is? There, there are colleges and universities across the country that invite high school counselors and even independent counselors that charge a fee, and usually it's a premium fee, to do private independent counseling on the side. I wanted to when colleges invite me, I fortunately, in all the years that I've been at Ramona High School, I've received the support of administration. They have allowed me to go to as many out-of-state counselor visitations as I deem it necessary. So funding-wise, I've got the support from the universities because they cover pretty much all my expenses. And I also, if I don't get it fully covered, my administration at Ramona High School will support me and cover the difference. And in, in some cases, my school district has even picked up the cost of any un, unmatched need 
that would allow me to fly out and visit the colleges and network with counselors and network with admissions people. Um, I, I do seek out colleges that make it an effort to meet our students' demonstrated financial need 100%. Because there are many colleges that talk the talk, but do they walk the walk? And financially, it is very important because it's one thing when a top tier institution will say, you've been admitted. But by the way, we don't have enough money for you. We can't meet your 100% demonstrated need. So I particularly look at, at colleges that have a good endowment that really is targeting diversity. And when we're looking at diversity, we're talking about geographical diversity of our student population. We're talking about socioeconomic diversity. We're talking about first generation diversity and ethnic diversity. And in Riverside, we have some of the finest students that our nation has to offer. And I, and I know that our students will be very lucky to have these opportunities. And also, these colleges will be very lucky to have our students. And then, uh, which fly-in programs did you attend? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've attended quite a number. <laughs> um, yes. So, um, Minnesota, in Minnesota, I've at Carleton College, McAllister College, and St. Olaf College, there are great liberal arts colleges like the Claremont Colleges. And in fact, one of my students, my former students who is a Questbridge scholar, is actually attending Carleton College in Minnesota, and he just graduated. Um, and I think he's pursuing like being a medical doctor. In Maine, I attended one counselor flying visit in Maine where I went to Kobe College, Bates College, and Bowdoin College, and that's like the liberal arts colleges of the Claremont Colleges, and I sent two Ramona students to Kobe College on a full ride. One is working with the FBI, and one is working for the institution in, in a mission, so it's, it's pretty cool. And from there, I met this vice president of Kobe College, who then moved up to another institution, and then I started to develop a partnership with Bennington College in Vermont. I've sent 15 Ramona students there, and two years ago, I sent eight Ramona students and combined they they receive a total of two million dollars over four years to attend Bennington College in Vermont but it was through the connection with Kobe College I network with the admissions folks there and then when they move on to a different college I then jump on board and then network with them too um, mm -hmm. and then Ohio um, I, I've been to a couple in, in Ohio, the University of Dayton and um, Miami University of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Dickinson College, Gettysburg, Franklin and Marshall, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City University, Oregon, Linfield College, Florida, the University of Tampa, um, I was just there last year, and Massachusetts is a big one because as we know, Massachusetts, especially Boston, has a large college community. So I've been to a couple of those, Clark University, WPI, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, which is very avid friendly, very supportive of first gen type students for the engineering field. And in Bentley University, I've sent a couple to study business, known for um, business. Emerson College is known for film. And then Simmons College is an all female school. Um, in Vermont, again, is Bennington College. And then I attended one last year at UC Berkeley. Um, so I have a couple more that I'll be going to this coming year. Um, it's Case Western University. Rivers Reserve University, probably Emory University, and maybe UPenn. Wow. How do you hear about all these places? Do they reach out to you, or you just kind of Google them, or is there like a list somewhere we can find? Yes, it's both. There, on, there, there's a w website that I, I went to that had all the different council fly-in programs in, in our country, and and I'm trying to remember the, the exact link to it, but I shared it with our, all of our counselors. In, in our school district. Some of them may have taken advantage of it. Um, I forgot to mention that there, there's one called Grand Canyon University that's that did fly us out there, including some of my colleagues from Riverside Unified. Um, but I also reach out to them as well, especially the ones that, that I feel it's worth asking. So I do make random phone calls. Um, I just made one recently to a school in New York asking them about a flying program. So it, it, it takes time, obviously, to reach out to the colleges. And the worst they can say is, no, we don't offer anything. Or yes, we do offer it. And you are on our list. And once we're ready to offer you a spot, we will cover your entire cost. And then maybe we can start a pipeline between your school and 
our institution. So yeah. that that's how it, it worked. What we could do is I could get the link from you at a later time and we'll post that on our Reach Higher uh, YouTube channel. So then everybody could get that link if they're interested in the fly-in programs. Okay. Um, I personally have only done one fly-in. I did one to the University of Nevada, Reno. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was really cool. I learned a lot. I've never been to Reno and, and it's really pretty out there. Yeah. Not only do they do fly-ins for counselors, they also do it for students. Right. So that was pretty cool to, to see that. And I know a lot of institutions do it for students too. Um, right. I had a student who did a fly-in out to the East Coast to see MIT and Harvard. So that's pretty cool um, that they offer that to our students as well. Exactly. Um, I read an article about you in College Week Live, and I saw that you had um, promoted College Week across your campus. Mm -hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and then also the scholarships because um, you've been you've been helping students get a lot of scholarships in, in your school and and I'd, I'd really like everyone to understand like how you promoted that on campus yeah so scholarships are really important because they definitely cover a lot for our, our students in terms of their need um, at, at Ramona High School not only would there be a list that we give but I, I would actually go into the the Abbott senior classes and give them updates and and tell the students you need to apply for this scholarship especially the local ones and then there are some big ones that you got to apply for like the Gates the Quest Bridge and um, the Dell scholarship um, so there are times that I as a counselor will personally reach out to certain students that I feel have a really good shot at certain scholarships based on on who they are and what they've accomplished so it so besides going into the classroom I've also counseled kids by bringing them into my office and giving them that that stream of encouragement that they need because oftentimes many of our high school students do not realize that they have a really good shot of getting these scholarships and but they they might either lack the awareness or they might lack um, it's definitely not the motivation because I think we can definitely motivate students as counselors. Um, sometimes they, they might lack the confidence of their ability to actually get the scholarship. But when, when we do encourage them and tell them you need to apply for it, and it takes time, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Um, I, I've been, when, when we do college counseling and scholarship counseling at my school, I would have to meet with certain students and it does take some time. But it's definitely worth it if they do end up getting scholarships. And then uh, going back to the uh, college flying programs, when you were talking about the scholarships that your students received, um, so they get accepted to the university, and then how do they get the scholarship? Is it something that you recommend, or is it something the college reaches out to the students? Can you talk about that? Yeah. The, the private schools that our students get into, the ones that we have partnerships with, have a pretty good endowment. Um, and if, if they don't have enough money, I, as a counselor, would reach out to the financial aid office or admissions office and, and say, we have a student here that really wants to go to your campus. Can you give that student a little bit more? The student doesn't have a lot of financial resources and support, but really wants to go to your institution. And we've got a great partnership. We, we want to continue that, that tradition and pipeline going. Just to give you an example, last year I had one student. Um, his name was Carlos, and he he actually, after he flew to his dream school, Bentley University in Massachusetts, he ended up going there, but he was short of $15,000. So I had to make phone calls even on the weekends, on a Saturday, with the higher-ups, trying to make sure that he gets what he needs in order to secure that commitment to attend. And they reduced it from 15000 to $5,000. Um, but, but it took a lot of time on the phone, back and forth, emailing financial aid and admissions and picking up the phone. Is it worth it? Yes, because he's at his dream school. Did it? Was it time-consuming? Yes, but it was definitely worth it. For certain students, I'm definitely going to go to bat for them, especially if it's a school that I know can offer a lot of support financially. Um, I, I do review their financial aid packages and just make sure that financially it makes sense. And if they need more money, they definitely will be encouraged to apply for scholarships that we, we get from the local community in Riverside, Greater Dollars for Scholars, um, the Elks Lodge. Um, yeah, but there's so many scholarships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if but there there's even a lot of need based and and um, and merit type scholarships too for our students that the colleges do have. Um, it's just reaching out to them, and the worst they can say is no. And if that's the case, then we move on and we will go to a different school. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah that's true. 
That's great. You've done amazing work at your school, and uh, you have a great team. Um, your counseling team sounds amazing. Uh, do you have any advice for new school counselors that are just starting out in their job this year? Being a, a part-time faculty member at, at two local universities in the school counseling um, program, you know, the, the vast majority of, of graduate guidance programs center on clinical counseling. The individuals, the groups, and the cross-cultural counseling, the legal and ethical aspects of, of counseling as well, but oftentimes ignored, which is something that's so critically important with the shift in public education for high school counseling towards um, college readiness and college admissions, I, I feel like professional development is very important because being a new counselor, we, we didn't get a lot of training in college admissions, in FAFSA, in A2G, in graduation requirements, even knowing about colleges. They cover a lot more on the clinical counseling aspect, which I totally get as a counselor. We, we try our best to provide college admission counseling, but how do we effectively, effectively also help a student that's coping with anxiety, with stress, with meeting the graduation requirements for high school, and with our large caseloads that involve IEPs, with 504s, with SSTs, with EL learners, it is a daunting task. <laughs> Um, and, and how do we find time to do one-on-one -on -one individual counseling in the world of, of admissions? So my advice to new counselors will be take advantage of professional development opportunities and, and any opportunities where they can visit colleges and learn more about colleges, um, whether it's a UC system, Cal State system, out of state, um, I think will be very, very effective. I agree with you on that. Like pro professional development is really important, so take advantage of all that. Um, there's even free workshops people can attend, like yeah. CSAC workshops, ACT, SAT workshops. Yeah. So take advantage of all the opportunities out there. Even if you're not a new school counselor, things change all the time, so be sure you go to those professional developments. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we go into our Sunshine Spotlight? Um, did you like anyone to know? There's tons of counselor fly-in programs. And, and I can share the, the list with, with counselors in, in, in Riverside. And, and I would really encourage whether they're new counselors and seasoned veteran counselors that what we can do, in, and it's all about opportunities for our students in, in Riverside, the more opportunities that we, we give them outside of just California schools, I think really helps many of our students consider the different opportunities. But um, I, I do have to list, and I'm still working on going to more and more of these counselor fly-ins. I'm not done. I'll probably be done when I retire, but that's not anytime soon. You probably will be able to travel around the whole United States at this point, right? Can you tell us what your greatest accomplishment was as a school counselor? There, there was one year that we had seven Dell Scholars, which was the most in the state of California. That was back in 2013 when I was traveling in Japan on spring break. I got the news that seven Ramona students received the Dell scholarship, which is $20,000 per student. And, and I was jumping up and down in, in the hotel lobby in, in Japan. Um, but I, I think that is definitely one of my greatest um, achievements as a counselor to know that seven Dell scholars came from Ramona High School, which is the, the most in the state of California at that time. But my, I, and, and I'm, I'm definitely also very proud of this one student. Her name was Maria. Um, she was an undocumented student. And, and I, I remember her very vividly because she was a, a, a leader on our campus, played tennis, but she was undocumented. And, and she felt that all she can go to is RCC, a community college. And I said to Maria, you're way better than that. You've worked so hard. Work with me here. There's one college that I really want you to apply to. And this was Pitzer College in Claremont. And they offer a full ride undocumented um, scholarship um, to an undocumented student. And in March, she received her finance, she received her acceptance and bursting out of joy and tears. And that was one of my greatest moments ever in letting her know that she could do it. And she is now, I think, pursuing immigration law, if I'm not mistaken. She's a real social activist. So definitely really proud of her and, and met many of my other students. But that's really one that came to mind. For a student that thought all she had to, to aspire to was RCC and eventually ended up going to the Claremont Colleges on a full-ride scholarship for four years, nothing could beat that.
Yeah. And you also wrote a book. Can you talk a bit about your book? Yes. So, um, access and, and equity is, is 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 a huge passion of mine. Um, access and equity. And so, um, in two in 2012, there were two professors. Um, one from Cal State Fullerton and one from UCLA. They did a research on some of my students that I've actually um, sent to different colleges throughout the country. One was featured for her um, work in the STEM field at WPI. Another one was featured as a student at Harvard and then one at UC San Diego. So this particular research, um, is the book is called Pivotal Moments, How Educators can put all students on the path to college. Um, this book is being used at several undergraduate institutions and one of them is in Claremont by sociology of education professors. Um, so the fact that my students were featured and my pseudonym was Mr. Chang, which is fine, um, they, they couldn't reveal the actual names of the counselors and the students, but I felt very inspired actually being part of this research and this book that this professor did. Um, well, for, for our Sunshine Spotlight, we like to share whatever made you happy this week. So can you tell us at least one thing that made you happy this week? Yeah, I, I, I receive a, a, a really nice gift today from a former student that sent like a, a package. Um, it's like a special memorabilia of Disney because she works for Disney and after writing her a recommendation letter to help her get into the Masters of Business Administration program at CBU, I wasn't expecting a, a nice thank you or, or e even a gift from a former student. But it just makes you realize that there are students who are so appreciative of the work that we do as counselors. Um, it is students that that invite us to graduations or even their weddings that make it really feel, feel special for us. Um, so that was one of the highlights. And there, there have been several other highlights o over my 23-year career, but um, for this week, this is the highlight. It happened today. Awesome. Yeah, it was a Disney gift, and I was like, wow, that was pretty nice. It's a nice gift, and it probably made your day. Uh, for my Sunshine Spotlight, uh, I'd have to say it just happened today. Um, we just got a video from uh, Jim Perry and the Riverside City Council. They made a, a video at our site encouraging Michelle Obama to come to Riverside for College Signing Day. And um, our school and our county have been working trying to get her to come to Riverside for all our seniors for College Signing Day. And our students wrote hundreds of letters to Michelle Obama inviting her out to Riverside and they've done videos, they've done a ton of stuff, they put in a lot of work. So I'm really proud of my school and, and also our county because um, we have amazing school counselors. We have amazing educators, and um, I'm hoping someday that Michelle Obama will come out and celebrate our students and you know our amazing staff, but most importantly, our students. So, Mark, I just want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. If you could just say goodbye to everyone out there. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And it's been an, an honor to be a part of this. And um, way to go, counselors. Go, counselors. Come to Riverside, Michelle Obama. Thank you, guys. We're tuning out. Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.